We're gonna progressively add more weight until it fails. Today we're challenging print strength with a real world test. We'll attempt to get to the bottom of a fundamental 3D printing tip with a practically impractical mess of an experiment, featuring a 3D printed spool roller and an unfortunate failed print. Whether you're a 3D printing beginner, a dreamman who's looking for some new tips and tricks, a pro who thinks they know the outcome of this experiment, or just someone who wants to see something get demolished, this video is for you. Come on, let's go. Sharing my recently 3D printed spool roller on TikTok sparked some interesting feedback about print orientation. A universally accepted tip for all 3D printing enthusiasts is that layer lines are one of the weak spots of the print, meaning that it's best to rotate your print so that the layer lines are being compressed when force is applied, opposed to that force working to break the layer lines apart. For example, this 3D printed support for my chair is in the proper orientation. The force of me sitting on the part compresses the layer lines together. So the risk that those layers will separate is zero. However, the spool roller that I printed ignores this logic and is printed in a manner where it could snap because the force of a kilogram of filament is putting strain on the layer lines. I'm not disagreeing with the people who said I picked the worst orientation for printing this. I printed this spool roller the way that I did because that's how I printed my first spool roller, and the second, and the third. And all three have been working for years with no issues. But it did get me thinking, how much could this poorly oriented 3D part actually handle? So I put together an experiment to find out. We're not just testing a roller, we're diving deep into the importance of print orientation, a crucial part of 3D printing. I set up a test that's fun, educational, demonstrates what happens when you challenge the norms of 3D printing, and is also a little dangerous and stupid, so don't try this at home. I printed another spool roller using the same print orientation, same print settings, and same cheap PLA as the original roller. I then borrowed the metal roller mount from one of my Ender 3 Pros, attached the 3D printed roller to it, and clamped the whole cursed assembly onto my rolling laptop tray. My intent was to continually add weight to the spool roller until it snapped. And to up the ante, I placed a failed print of the Snoring Warrior Tavern directly beneath the spool roller to all but ensure the untimely demise of the humble tavern and its patrons. Being the Herculean pinnacle of male physique that I am, it's only natural that I had weights laying around. However, they didn't fit over the spool roller, so I had to tie the weights to a luggage strap and then place that on the roller. The strap is rated to 500 pounds, but I can assure you right now that we don't come close to that limit. I started with a puny two and a half pounds, which is just over a kilogram of weight. So I wasn't surprised when the spool roller held that weight easily. From there, I doubled to five pounds, then seven and a half pounds, and then 10. I gently put the strap of weight around the spool roller, give it a minute, and when it didn't snap, remove the load and add more weight to it. With each round, I became more and more aware of the risk of personal and physical injury. So I say this again, don't try this at home. Finally, we reached 15 pounds, and that's when it happened. No, not that. At 15 pounds, or nearly 7 kilograms of weight, for those of you who use a unit system that actually makes sense, the roller held fast and steady. I was beginning to wonder if I was taking it too easy on the print by placing the load in the middle. So I decided to shift the weight down to the end of the roller. But with that move, it was the metal mount that gave way and bent outward. With that, I decided to end the experiment. Since the improperly oriented 3D print had managed to outlast a metal OEM part that comes with the Ender 3, I think it's fair to say that the print is sufficient for holding one kilogram while in use. Do these results mean that every roller printed in the same manner will work just as well? Not at all. Does it mean that the orientation of prints can be ignored in other projects? Absolutely not. Instead, I suggest that the roller's resilience offers a valuable lesson. Sometimes, unconventional methods work. We should never ignore standards or community-accepted common knowledge. It's there for a reason. But challenging what we consider to be best practices 
In order to fully understand how our 3D printers work and what they're capable of is an important trick that can help yield amazing results in your projects. This somewhat less than dramatic end of the experiment isn't just for show. It emphasizes unexpected strengths and limitations of 3D printed objects. With that said, you should always test your prints beyond what you think they can handle. As for the Snoring Warrior Tavern, well, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we were going to demolish something, and when it comes to the internet, you can't hint at something like that and then not deliver. I loaded up the luggage straps once more, this time to 50 pounds. I summoned the strength of all the Snickers bars coursing through my body to lift the load, and then... Today's experiment sheds light on the nuances of 3D printing from orientation and material strength standpoints. Even though this was in fact the worst possible orientation to print this part, I think these results are useful whether you're a beginner in the space or someone who's been here for a while. Kind of like a nice little reminder that the learning never stops. If nothing else, it serves as a reminder that we should question absolutely everything that we've been told, run our own experiments, and never accept an answer at face value. If you're looking for more tips, tricks, and deep dives into 3D printing, you are in the right place. Share your thoughts, questions, or what you'd like to learn next in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more 3D printing projects and adventures, as we all work together to become masters of 3D printing. Keep pushing the boundaries of what you can create. My name is Kyle, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.